Hey everyone, so the first thing I'm doing is priming the eye area. It's always the first step that I take because it helps the shadows to apply nice and smoothly. It prevents the shadows from creasing throughout the day and it makes those colours pop. So I've just taken some of the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Primer onto the back of my hand, dipped my brush into it and now I'm working it into the skin using a synthetic brush which is actually also from Wet n Wild. So I'm focusing on affordable products today, I'm taking this palette, it's the Rose in the Air eyeshadow palette and I've uploaded several tutorials featuring this palette before, it's a great one to have in your collection and it's extremely affordable. So I've taken the transition shade on a fluffy blending brush and I've started by working this into the crease area of the eye, rocking the brush back and forward in the crease just to disperse the shadow. So I've been running the brush back and forward, back and forward until all of the shadow is now off of the brush. Then what I like to do is start on the edge and use the fluffiness of the brush this time to diffuse out that harsh edge. You want the shadow to fade out to nothing the closer to the brow bone that you get. So I'm buffing the brush back and forward now moving it higher and higher towards the brow bone just to fade out that edge. So that's one light layer now and I'm happy with the colour placement and the blend of the shadow but I do want to intensify the colour a bit further so that's why I'm adding a second layer. You'll never achieve all three things in one application, you do have to layer. Then I'm switching to a smaller bullet shaped brush to add some shadow down along the lower lash line now and I'm starting at the outer portion of the lash line making my way across right into the tear duct and then of course making sure that it connects up with the shadow above so I'm just swinging it up onto the lid. Next then I'm taking this dark matte brown eyeshadow and a slightly smaller fluffy brush. I don't want this shadow to cover up the shadow that I applied previously and that's why I'm opting for a slightly more precise blending brush. I'm tapping this down on the outer third of the lid first and then I'm making my way into the deepest part of the crease. Again using little wriggling motions to buff and blend the shadow into the crease. When I'm pulling the shadow upwards, I'm using little flicking motions to blend it um, with the transition shade. As you can see, it's still there, it's still apparent, we still have the warmth from the transition shade, but we've created a bit more depth to the look. For the lower lash line now, I want to get a little closer to the lashes, so I'm using an angled brush to pat that brown down along there. And as you can see, it looks darker than the application above, and that's because I've used a dense brush. So a fluffy brush will add a light layer of product and you can build up the intensity, whereas a dense brush will apply a heavier layer of product, but you have the option of softening it after if you want. Next then I'm going to clean up that inner half of the eyelid and create the half cut crease effect. It's really easy to do so I'm just taking the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer on a flat C shaped brush. I've added the concealer once again to the back of my hand and I'm dipping my brush into it um, and then tapping it onto the lid area. If I went in with the applicator straight onto the lid I could possibly over apply the concealer and then it's hard to blend it out and it just gets messy. So at least adding it to the back of my hand I have more control over the amount I'm applying. So I'm just tapping this halfway across the lid, letting the shape of the brush curve to the shape of my lid. And a C-shaped brush makes life so much easier because it complements the shape of the crease, making it much easier to define. To set the concealer in place to make sure that it doesn't budge and to also further brighten up the lid, I'm going in with this cream shadow from the palette and I've taken this up on a C-shaped brush. This one though isn't synthetic like the last and it works much better with powder products and I'm just tapping this anywhere that I added the concealer. With whatever now is left on my fluffy brush, I'm buffing this onto the outer portion of the eye in towards the lid so that the cream shade and the brown fade nicely into one another. And if you were having problems blending those two together or if you just want more of a gradient effect, go back in with that transition shade, place it in between the cream and the dark brown and buff back and forth to marry those two together. Next then I'm taking this black eyeshadow from the House of Thorns palette. I've dipped an angled brush into this shadow now and I'm working it into the lash line just on the outer third of the eye only. And once I've laid down that shadow and I'm happy enough with the placement, then I'm switching to a small pencil brush and I'm using this to fade out the edges of the black just on that very outer edge so that you have the darkness and definition at the lash line where you want it, but then it fades upwards from there and it'll just give a nice lift to the eye. 
For the waterline then I'm taking a brown cold pencil and I'm running this back and forth in the waterline and what I like to do to coat the top and bottom waterline at the same time is to place the pencil in, close my eye around the pencil and then just wriggle it back and forth and you kill two birds with the one stone. So then I'm using a natural pair of false lashes from Kiss called the Lily Lashes. I've added those and then I'm using the Wet n Wild Mega Length Mascara. I'm adding a few coats of this to the top and bottom lashes, mainly to the top lashes because I want to fuse them together with my own lashes, make it look a little bit more natural. And then that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, found it easy to follow and helpful. If you did, please let me know and I'll catch you all really soon.